In this episode, I'm going to be doing a review of the book Pop Magic by Alex Kazemi, forward by Rose McGowan. It's a book that caught my eye. Uh, I'm always looking for new texts talking about magic. Uh, I do believe magic is a real thing. It's a very unpopular opinion in this new enlightened age, but actually it is becoming more commonly accepted that unseen forces, unseen hands, mystical, occult secrets are behind the architecture of the universe. Whether you believe that as literally or figuratively, spiritually, metaphorically, I'm going to be doing a review of Pop Magic by Alex Kazemi. Alex Kazemi is an interesting figure. Uh, how he got so many strong endorsements for this book seems like magic to me alone. Uh, this book, if I had to sum up what this book kind of focuses on, I would say it, it focuses on getting beyond an invisible barrier, but a very specific invisible barrier. For example, meeting your hero, someone you idolized your whole life. There is a barrier between you meeting some celebrity you've always wanted to meet. Um, that barrier is very real, yet that barrier is invisible. Just like that barrier is real and invisible, there are unseen forces working behind the scenes. Alex says he doesn't know exactly how these unseen forces do their magic, how they work. He doesn't detail exactly what these unseen forces, mystical, unknown entities. He doesn't know how they work. The mystery is there, but he just knows that it does work. Looking at this book from an objective perspective, he does have a lot of endorsements from legitimate celebrities. You can check out this book and you can see the reviews for yourself or the endorsements. Shirley Manson, lead singer of Garbage, a very cool band. She said, Alex Gazemi is a boy wonder. He has Marilyn Manson. That's quite the endorsement. I don't think Marilyn Manson is going to just randomly give an endorsement to a book. At least he felt there was some worth behind it. Marilyn Manson said, if Alex is a magician, then he would disappear. If Alex is a magician, then he would disappear. I had to read that two or three times before I realized he's probably saying, this guy is so motivated. If he wants to be a magician, he is one. He could disappear. He's that good. Quite the endorsement. Many more high-profile endorsements. I'm not going to read them all. Check it out for yourself. But the first 30 pages really inspired me. It's a journey that a kid from Canada took to getting a response from Marilyn Manson personally. That's not my dream or goal, but he was his. And he achieved it. And he attributes magic, specifically pop magic, to the outcome of having success with that. Clearly, he's friends with Marilyn Manson, otherwise Marilyn wouldn't have had such a positive endorsement of this book as to say he can do anything. So what is pop magic? I read a lot of magic books, I read a lot of occult books, I consider information neutral. So. I don't practice magic. I've said this in dozens of videos and I usually get uh, negative comments. People tell me, ah, you're not an occultist, you're not a practitioner, you're not a sorcerer, you're not a witch. Then why do you read that stuff? You don't know anything, man. Well, I take my own route. Just like Alex Kazemi t took his own route and he created his own magic, pop magic, which I'll give a summary what I believe pop magic is shortly. I lead my own route as well. My route is to refrain from practicing magic, but observe it on a level where I've had firsthand contact with invisible entities. And that's something that a lot of people are skeptical of. You see a lot of ghost shows with a lot of theatrical responses. So it's hard to know if it's something in the script or if it's a genuine response 
And even if it is a genuine response, you still don't know if there was an entity there. I started my journey in 2010 when I had first-hand contact with an invisible being. I just talked about that at length in my previous video. Check that out. What is pop magic? I would say, to summarize in my own personal view, even Alex would probably disagree with this, but I would say pop magic is folk magic. Specifically, here's a bunch of guidelines, here's a bunch of rules. But even as Alex says in the book, make up the rules for yourself. Here's the guidelines. Pick and choose what candle color, what oil, what resonates with you. Make and find your own path. He wanted to connect with some very powerful people. There were extreme invisible barriers between him connecting with those people. And he clearly was successful. Here's another endorsement which I enjoyed. Bella Thorne said, I want to heal. This book should help me along my treacherous path to better understanding myself. Candle magic, water magic, sigil magic. He tells you how to activate the sigil. He tells you specifically A, B, and C. He had a goal. He wanted to have a business collaboration with someone. He made a sigil, poured energy into the sigil, activated the sigil, sent private messages to that person he wanted to collaborate with. In a million years, not expecting he would get a response. But right after the magic ritual, or 24 hours later, or maybe a week later, but bam, he gets a response and collaborates with that person. Whether you want to collaborate with high-profile superstars, it's neither here nor there. You can learn from this book. There is information that is unique that I haven't seen the exact information in here, A to Z, really outlining. I haven't seen in any books. So it is unique. I've seen bits and pieces, specifically the candles, the colors, what they mean. So he does give details. Alex considers himself a witch, but I would never in any way, shape, or form want to bother anyone that wants to express their beliefs. Alex specifically said that he believes there are spirits, entities, angels, demons, and that's actually a leap. Most magical practitioners, most witches, that I've had communication with, either in person or online, most are not really into that. Most say it's probably part of the psyche, subconscious, the microcosm, macrocosm, and it's part of our higher self. But I like that Alex is more on my page of actually having an open mind. Even though it's an ancient belief, it doesn't mean it's obsolete. Ancient beliefs, are not always wrong. The ancients, sure, they had to stare at a log with fire as opposed to a television set, but they were very meditative. Alex talks about meditation in this book. The ancients, they meditated. I think they were more in tune with their five senses and even six senses. I believe six senses is a real thing. I'm open to seven, eight, nine, ten senses uh, and, and to infinity and beyond because I've experienced things where it wasn't my five senses. It wasn't touch, taste, smell, hear, see, but it was something else. We have a lot of squirrels in this park. This park is actually filled with a lot of energy. Uh, so I wanted to do the review here, but every time I came here, there was frisbee golfers constantly throwing frisbee golf frisbees and into the chains. Hopefully there's not a frisbee golf chain thing around here. <laughs> Tried to pick the most secluded spot in this park. And here we have squirrels playing. So the squirrels are comfortable with me doing a book review here to the point where they're going to play. Very cool. It's a very positive atmosphere here, I noticed. There's geese, ducks, birds, squirrels, and they're all happy. It's one of the rare happy locations in this city, which I have just moved to. 
Alex Gizemi talks about alchemy, but not turning lead into gold. Anyone who has researched alchemy longer than five seconds have noticed that it doesn't even focus on lead into gold. That's almost a decoy. The alchemists of old probably invented to throw people off of what true alchemy is. Mental alchemy, success, turning one thing into another thing, that's not lead into gold, but it might as well be. I will read a very quick paragraph on page 57. Examples of how magic manifests. Female identifying practitioner does a specific outcome spell to attract a romantic partner on the Libra new moon. This practitioner sets out the intentions of the quality she wants in a girlfriend. Practitioner downloads Tinder and coincidentally gets super liked by almost the exact dream girl she visualized and is now feeling a resurgence of the energy she imagined when she envisioned the spell working. Now, eh, you might laugh at that, you might think that's funny, but actually Alex Zemi might be one of the foremost leading pioneers in some type of new form of magic, which he would definitely call pop magic. So while I previously said pop magic from my perspective is folk magic, he goes around and uses what is around him, like a tree, water, piece of paper, but apps, apps on his phone. So some type of app magic, some type of application, website, DM magic. It, it sounds funny, but if it has worked for many, many times to the point where he's getting endorsements from some high profile superstars, I would say there has, has to be something to it. I like to observe. I'm more of the observer. I don't practice magical things knowingly. But I would say, according to Alex, I unknowingly do practice magic. So his definition of magic is definitely wide ranging. Here we have probably the first frisbee golfer hitting the chains to disrupt this review. I have some more highlights from a previous video I filmed reviewing this book, but the audio wasn't the best. It's called Pop Magic by Alex Kazemi. This book is all about magic. I really like the name Pop Magic. Don't judge a book by its cover. Pop Magic. Pop Magic. I like the name. I like the name of Pop Magic. I just finished reading this book a few minutes ago. The first 30 pages went by, it felt like in 30 seconds. So this book really has some inspiring cliffhangers that make you want to keep reading. He gives actual examples of what has happened in his life firsthand, and it, it's definitely impressive um, to the point where I'm like, oh, is, this, is this for real? So I have to research and see that he appears to have actually made many connections and he attributes all of his success to magic. He says how you know, he got to collaborate with one of his heroes and uh, the process I'm sure is definitely condensed that could have been an entire book of its own condensed to a couple pages but it's inspiring because if you put your mind to it you can achieve the unthinkable, the impossible. I can relate to this book. I can relate. I can just give you one example of how I relate. I'm not a magic practitioner, but according to Alex Gazemi, everyone is. So just generally speaking, one time I was looking at the stars and I said, oh, I'd really like to fast forward six months. I was in the VIP of something I really wanted to be in. And uh, I only got there for one reason, one reason alone. Alex Kazemi does mention positive thinking. Your will can bend the reality of the universe. Themes you've heard probably from other books. But Alex goes into great detail in what he exactly does. I didn't perform any magic ritual, but if pop magic, folk magic, you could say I did, not knowingly, willingly, and Alex mentions how prayer is magic, 
And then he says, uh, but I prefer this method. But prayer technically is magic. Putting an intention, thought, what you want to accomplish, achieve, and uh, getting a result. So Alex mentions how prayer is magic. Some would disagree with that. But to be honest, a rose by any other name, prayer does have a magical property to it, most definitely. I guess it depends who you pray to and what you pray to and what you want to get out of it. But magic is kind of like prayer, Alex says. This is not the book, just me. This is what I did. I was at a concert and I I got general admission. I got the dirt cheap general admission tickets, probably $30. And when I got to the box office, they gave me my tickets. I opened them up and it said row Z99 in the balcony. And I was literally the last row it was an empty balcony with no one in it. And Z99 was like literally the corner, we're talking 200 feet away from even any other people in the entire <laughs> building. <laughs> and I was like, I, I bought general admission. I didn't buy Z99. No one bought Z99. <laughs> you either get general admission or VIP. That's it. And um, I could see Alex saying this is because six months before that, approximately, it could have been a year, but it was definitely so long, many months previous that I forgot until I remembered that I wished upon a star that I could. Some of the techniques in this book you can apply the positive thinking. He has a, a chapter or a sub chapter on positive thinking and how it is one of his favorite methods of magic. So he considers po even positive thinking magic. So pop magic is very open-ended, where it, it, anything can be magical. And it's definitely a pretty refreshing view on magic. So I went to the box office, opened up tickets, it said row Z99. I was like, hey, uh, I'd buy general admission. I didn't buy Z99. Because I literally went to Z99 and I was like, wait a second. I went back to the box office and I was like, hey, I didn't order this. And they said, uh, nothing we can do, sorry. I said, you know what, I'm not moving from this spot right here that I'm standing until I get my general admission tickets that I paid for. Must be some type of error on the computer's part or whoever or whatever, but I didn't get Z99, I paid for general admission. I'm not moving from this spot, even if I have to stand here for hours, until I get the general admission tickets I paid for. And I stood there for probably three, four, five minutes until he realized, oh, this guy's serious. And we're, they're like, oh, what can we do? We can't, it's not working. <laughs> and they ended up handing me a VIP bracelet. <laughs> and I, I, um, I walked in, I went to the VIP section, I was like, hey, I don't want to be in the VIP section. I want to be up close to the band, what, like what I paid for, general admission. And uh, I was in the VIP section for a short period of time. And uh, this book mentions celebrities, and there was a celebrity in the VIP section. I was right there, and there he was. And I was like, yeah, I recognize you. But I didn't want to bother him, I didn't talk to him. And the parents of the band uh, lead singer were in the VIP section, but I didn't want, I didn't, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there, so I just hung out in general admission. And then they gave us pizza after the show, cold pizza, out of the tour bus, they gave us the cold pizza. So I got to eat the cold vegan pizza. Long, horrible story, but the fact is, some type of magical process gave me that VIP pass because six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, whatever months prior I wished upon a star and something was listening. Someone, some entity. Um, what impressed me was usually I read a book like this and there aren't too many books like this but I'll read a generic old cold book and um, it'll say it's all in the mind, it's all in the psyche. Dreams are just symbols of the inner universe but on page 53, the microcosm of the macrocosm, there's nothing 
more annoying than reading over and over, time and time again, and book after book after book, the microchasm of the mic It's just, they're trying to sound like geniuses. But Alex Kazemi, he definitely has and is in tune with some information that has greatly helped his career. On page 53, Alex says, I believe, and this is in the chapter headed title called, How the F Do I Know When Magic Works? <laughs> He's very blunt and uses foul language. Definitely a book for adults. This channel, officially, I have designated it under the uh, regulations. It's for grown-ups, all right? It's for adults. It's for mature audiences only. Uh, not of any explicit nature, but occult books are definitely more for someone who's old enough to smoke. He says he did start practicing rituals, magic, at a young age. Me personally, I started even being exposed to the occult world when invisible entities started to bother me. A lot of people don't believe in invisible entities. A lot of occult authors don't believe in invisible entities. But look, listen to what Alex Kazemi says on page 53. I believe that when we do rituals, we open ourselves up to the spirit world, angels, entities, demons, to whom we cast out our spells. They mold this energy into the material plane. These entities will then test our mental and physical endurance to see if we can prepare and change ourselves to go where we need to be in order to achieve our intended goal. He's way more on the level of truth than most occultists, even admitting he believes angels, entities, and demons exist. Most occultists don't believe in angels, demons, entities. They believe it's all part of the psyche. They believe the realm of Carl Jung, famed Sigmund Freud friend, psychologist who believed every single ghost in the universe was a figment of man's psyche and imagination and nothing else. Other than to exaggerate in extreme detail with flowery words cut into the chase, they're not real. Other than inside here. But I, I, perhaps he's using the word um, metaphorically, but I read the entire book and he's not. He's talking about he literally believes angels, entities, demons, to whom we cast out our spells, mold energy that we put out into the universe for our benefit, if it's part of our destiny. Now, as far as destiny, Alex mentions on a page that we're just living our destined path. It's been carved out for us. I believe in some of that, but I also believe in free will. He definitely believes in free will, and he mentions it. But I believe the universe is kind of a mix of both, destiny and free will, kind of mixed together. Like, there are destiny marks, but within those destiny marks, there's free will or chaos can take place. And he mentions order within chaos, chaos within order. He cuts to the chase, talks in a plain language you can understand, which is rare among occultists. Says in his book he is 25 years old, very young, to be as knowledgeable as he is on the occult. On page 144, the chapter heading is Entities. I'm just going to read a few lines. I'm going to tell you a secret that today's occult world doesn't want you to know. All angels, gods, goddesses, and demons are entities with whom you can collaborate and whose powers you can activate. Near the end of the book, he talks about the Illuminati, not on any grand conspiracy level, but says, you are the Illuminati. I am the Illuminati. Everyone's the Illuminati if they use magic. It's no secret Alex Kuzemi uh, practices witchcraft, identifies as a witch, sees a specific project he wants to do with a specific famous person, and six months later, maybe a year later, maybe a a couple of weeks later, I don't know the context of all these materializations, but he definitely says magic isn't instantaneous. You kind of do the ritual, put it to rest, forget about it, 
and when it happens, then you connect the dots and you remember, oh yeah, that ritual I did. I forgot. And tiny details within the ritual come to pass. And most definitely, I'm not going to deny magic is real, magic works. As a non-magic practitioner, why do I read such books? Knowledge is power. You can't go wrong with knowledge. You can't go wrong with knowing. Uh, he does mention on one page that, yeah, there are rituals with uh, celebrities in the dungeons of Beverly Hills. I can tell you, I've read many occult books, and I've never read one that said you rub the magical oil on the candle before you light it. That's just a tiny detail I didn't know. I've, I'm very familiar with magical oil. I'm very familiar with magical candles, or just regular candles. He, he said you have to charge them, and that's, I guess, you know, pretty standard process. But the rubbing of the oil and additional things you have to find out in the book yourself. I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. I don't plan on practicing that anytime soon. You know, there's a guy named Roger Morneau that threw away his candles, threw away his ritual book, because he was harassed by... Uh, negative entities. A lot of people didn't believe his story. I was harassed by negative entities. Very few people believe my story. Something really jumped out, popped off the page, and something in your life might pop off the page in this book as well. I don't want to share personal things to an extreme degree. I personally want to know the architecture of the universe. I've mentioned such many times but that's also a line in the movie, A Dark Song. He said, you can see the architecture. I do this so I can see what other people can't see, the architecture. I've been saying this for years. Only when spirit entities shattered my universe by walking straight into my room, through the corner of my room. I have a theory, corners of rooms. I've been saying this for years. Only one spirit entity shattered. I've been saying this for years. Only one spirit entity shattered my universe by walking straight into my room, through the corner of my room, I have a theory. Corners of rooms. I've been saying this for years. Only one spirit entity shattered my universe by walking straight into my room through the corner of my room, I have a theory. Corners of rooms. That's why this room corner is all black and white. For yin and yang. For every positive, there's a negative. And to deny the existence of the negative is to deny the existence of the positive. One cannot exist without the other. why this room corner is all black and white. For yin and yang, for every positive there's a negative. And to deny the existence of the negative is to deny the existence of the positive. One cannot exist without the other. That's why this room corner is all black and white. For yin and yang, for every positive there's a negative. And to deny the existence of the negative is to deny the existence of the positive. One cannot exist without the other. To try to eradicate one or the other is impossible. All must coexist and be balanced in the universe. So perhaps that's why the book is black with a little bit of white. Perhaps he leans more left-hand path with a little bit of light, or maybe it's just because it's a cool design. It looks pretty cool. Looks good. But I'm a big fan of black and white, yin and yang. Alex says when you're doing the ritual, you're kind of in a dream state then you forget. Then you 
forget. Let me forget. forget. When you forget. And when it comes true, you remember. And that you want to forget. You want to push it in the universe. Push it and you want to bury it or do whatever it is to charge it, activate it. And you want to let the universe take it from there. Specifically sigil magic, he says, you draw something on a piece of paper, you charge it different ways with oil or whatever the case put energy into it and then you activate it different ways one of those activation methods involves flushing it down the toilet I forgot what I was gonna say I forgot I forgot everything my mind went blank kind of like how Alex says you put it in the universe and you forget you activate it by flushing it down the toilet by burning it and whatnot. I'm not going to give the details. You gotta buy the book to get the details. I'm not selling the book, but his journey is definitely one I'll keep an eye on. Uh, he's so young that it'd be interesting to see where he's at in 10 years and 5 years. Oh, that's right. I was going to tell a story that kind of related to the entities will mold your energy into a, a reality. I did a ghost investigation Walking down Hollywood Boulevard, a spirit set the thing off consistently for probably close to an hour. And I don't know if it got bored or if it just prefers a region close to Ripley's, believe it or not, where ghost teams have gone to investigate famously. A lot of haunted objects at the Ripley's, believe it or not. Skulls, human skulls and whatnot in the Ripley's, believe it or not. I don't know if that's what did it. It could have been the wax museum on the other side. I don't know. But uh, there's definitely a ghost, spirits, multiple, on Hollywood Boulevard. So I walked all the way up, walked all the way down. What does this have to do with magic? What does this have to do with the book? He said, spirits, entities, demons, they take what you put out into the universe. They mold that energy into something to benefit you. Walked up it, walked down it. I get home, many hours driving later, I cut to the chase, I get an email from a major TV show. They told me a major TV channel, that they're the HR department, and I vetted the heck out of that. I'm the hoax hunter, I investigate. If anyone wants to bother me, or lie to me, or try to scam or cheat, I'll vet you within five seconds and know whether you're telling the truth or not. They were legit. It was the actual HR team for a major TV channel, and I think it has connections with, Go with Ghost Adventures and Zach Bagans. Uh, if I did more research, I could probably prove that, but I'm not in the realm of even caring anymore uh, because <laughs> I didn't get the I didn't get the I didn't get the role. But it was an audition for an unnamed ghost show. But whatever the case, I didn't get the the gig. Maybe in the future. I believe this is what happened. I walked Hollywood Boulevard, a spirit followed me half the way, and it said, you know, this guy's interesting. He's clearly a aspiring ghost hunter, expert, and uh, let's give him an opportunity. The spirit entities in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard, which people probably would mock, I don't know, but a pretty powerful spirit was on Hollywood Boulevard because a couple days after walking it, with no 
in any way, shape, or form me putting anything out there other than YouTube videos and walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard, they emailed me and said, hey, let's audition you for a ghost hunting show. I was like, whoa, this is weird. How I sound, what I look like, spirits don't care about that. Spirits see your spirit and they will want to interact with your device if you approach investigating them from a certain perspective. That's way in a huge tangent that goes forever off the rails, but um, Pop Magic, it definitely did give me some insight into, if anything else, how celebrities in Hollywood see magic and perform it. Alex just guesses that maybe this celebrity uses magic too. Maybe that celebrity uses magic. I know that celebrity uses magic. Alex is definitely in the inner circle. Maybe not the most inner circle, who, you know, if there even is one. But I think he's been definitely at a witch coven of some elite form or another. But Alex's book is mostly about empowering yourself making yourself known in the universe, saying, here I am, I can achieve and accomplish any goal I set my mind to, here are some tools he gives you to uh, do such a thing, and it involves magic. And I don't condone magic, I'm a non-practitioner, non-occultist, just an occult researcher. I do believe magic works. Matter of fact, I know magic works, because I've seen magic work around me. And I according to Alex and every human, according to Alex, have unconsciously, subconsciously, unknowingly practiced a form of what he calls pop magic and have achieved success because of that. Whether it's positive thinking, charging a goal, activating it, letting the universe work for your benefit. You see that among actually many celebrities. Jim Carrey talks about it. Will Smith talks about it. Will Smith read the book The Alchemist. You can have the universe bend to your will. And really it's not the universe bending to your will necessarily. What it is are the unseen forces in the universe working hard toward your benefit. Unseen forces, invisible entities, working hard for your benefit. What do they get out of it? What do they get out of it? I think you can obviously say the deal with the devil would be they steal your soul and take you to hell. And that's the cliche thing. I don't think you can sell your soul. If a negative entity or a spirit of any particular persuasion that has any sway helps you out, they either like you, find you amusing, entertaining, see you as having potential. Potential for what? They like your style. Many theories can go into this, but Alex says they put you through a test in not those exact words. But that is something that is talked about in Buddhism. The spirits, the demons, put you through a test. If you can get through that test, you are given success. And most people stop short of the patience. Stop short of drudging through the mud that is the hard trials that you have to go through until you gain respect or trust of these spirits, of these entities. Then they'll open up the floodgates. So they can't just like you. They have to see your dedication and diligence. The spirits on Hollywood Boulevard saw me walk one hour one direction and one hour the other direction trying to find existence of spirits on Hollywood Boulevard. And they rewarded me, I believe, with some random producer seeing my YouTube channel, contacting their HR department to at least interview me for a ghost hunting show. And then I get paranoid. I'm like, you know what? I didn't get it. Maybe they're just trying to spy on me. So that, you know, there's, with the good, there's the bad. Clearly he performed a magic spell to get me to do this book review. Or just anyone, just any YouTuber to do this book review. I do believe this actually happened. I personally believe 
Alex Kazemi did a magic ritual to specifically have YouTubers do book reviews of a positive nature on his book, Pop Magic. And it worked. So if that's not a testament to magic working, I don't know what is. Um, you're not always going to get your wildest dreams coming true. Um, I could have been very negative and skeptical. Uh, I could have disbelieved every single celebrity story he mentioned. I could have said magic is evil, don't touch it. It's the plague. And I could have given it a really negative review, but there are too many packets of information in the book to disregard. He says, the universe glitched, and I got what I sought out through magic. The universe glitched. I can relate to the universe glitching metaphor. Check it out. I went on a million tangents because I just wanted to stream of consciousness, talk about it, and think about different things. I could have broken up on a more analytical level, but I do recommend this book. You're going to find every chapter has a pretty funny anecdote, pretty funny story, a pretty useful detail, and then instructions on rituals that you may or may not be interested in, but uh, as a reference guide and just a physical manifestation of success stories attributed to magic, and Alex says this book exists only because of a magic ritual he performed. So he would have performed a ritual where he would have specifically visualized, I need to write this, I need to publish this, I need to get a publisher, I need to get this book deal. I have to admit, I, I've not visualized getting a book deal for my book, Corners of Rooms, which doesn't exist. So that alone inspires me. I thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been John Rasmus with Occult Unmasked. Be seeing you. I recommend this book for more knowledge. Information is neutral. It's what you do with that information that determines whether it is positive, negative, or continues to be neutral. I thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been John Rasmus. Be seeing you.